Hi everybody, John Stefano here and the Stoughton Dish is back. just a regular guy to most um, thank you for coming to our class this has actually been our biggest class yet right to date um, we have some newbies and we have some all-star oldies in here so which is awesome um, today we are doing charcuterie I learned how to say that like 15 minutes before class so that's awesome and um, usually like you'll go to these fancy dinner parties and you'll see this board and you're like oh my god it looks so fancy or whatever whatever but at the same time it's not that bad um, so what I like to do especially for all the classes that we do here I shop locally and I shop on a specific budget and I try to hit that mark every single time I shop regardless of what we're doing regardless if we're doing like a seafood paella or a simple ham and cheese sandwich like I like to keep it low and local as you know for everyone, the pandemic was crazy for everyone. I don't think anyone had like a fantastic time during the pandemic. For the first couple of weeks, you got to know your partner, you might have killed them, or you might have, you know, said you know, your kids drove you nuts, or whatever the situation is. But also at the same time, it created a lot of togetherness. Um, and we also had to work on budget. So when we designed this class, we designed this class to be gourmet on a budget. Um, doesn't mean you can't eat good, doesn't mean you can't eat well, and doesn't mean you can't like really s surprise yourself with the creativity that you can create today. So today's class is more of like a creative class. And everything that we have here is locally bought and shipped and farmed. So I'll go over ingredient lists. I will talk price like I, like I always do. We're gonna do price in the beginning. Usually I talk price at the end, but we're gonna talk price at the beginning. And then literally we're gonna walk around, we're gonna taste, we're gonna feel, we're going to create. Um, I will give some pointers. You guys will have, you guys have knives and cutting boards in front of you. Those cutting boards are for you. Um, and then as soon as we're done with our boards, at the end we'll talk about our boards and we'll talk about our inspiration on our boards. And that's it, that's like the kind of, the, the focal point of everything. I know everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy because I got a sweatshirt on and it's 90 degree weather, but I run cold all the time. Doesn't matter what it is, I, I'm like real crazy with that. So um, we're gonna talk price real quick on a couple of fresh items. So we'll talk price on strawberries, we'll talk tri price on um, grapefruits, apples, pears, tomatoes and cucumbers. Now, um, these are all fresh local items. Um, and I wanna say, um, I got everything on this table from Price Right. So I don't know if anybody's familiar with Price Right. A couple of people in the class before were like, well, I've never really been in there. I don't know what they have, so on and so forth. And then introducing them to what they do have, they're like, oh, I gotta go in there and get some stuff, which is awesome. Now. Um, I shop locally at Market Basket as well. Like if you're from New England, you know about the moolahs. It's one of those things you grew up with. Um, and now they have like these bigger Market Baskets which you can have um, bakery sections and deli sections and things like that. And they're really creating that for New England, which is awesome. Um, but it still has very low prices and low feel. So this table, this whole table that I got today, um, I kept the receipt because I wanted to talk about it. 
who can guess? Well, I'm gonna take three guesses for today. I'm just gonna to point to you and you tell me how much you think this whole table cost, spices included. So take a look, okay? Take a quick gander at it. Um, yeah, let's see here. Like we have like strawberry preserves, raspberry preserves, okay? Take that into consideration. Fresh strawberries, things like that. We have some laughing cow cheese, which is good. Cracker barrel, everybody knows cracker barrel. Um, and then we offer meats, we have like um, salami, we have hot capicola and caprese. We have a lot of that stuff in there and it's a three pack. So, Tirza, how much do you think the whole table costs? Uh, 65. Okay, and that's your guess because you know it's low? I'm, or I'm, I'm guessing that you did a good job in that. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Um, this young man on the corner, what do you think? 100 bucks. 100 bucks, okay. And? I was thinking 75. Okay, all right. So we have three different guesses. Today, I spent $65 on all this stuff today. So good, good to, I'm like, how did, did you look at my receipt? 65 bucks, which is awesome, and I always try to keep it super low because think about it. We're providing food for 11 of you guys. You guys will eat, and there will be, there'll be extras. Like, you guys could take them. So just imagine if you're really narrowing it down. Maybe you got two kids at home. They eat, like, tanks. You know, you're still not going to provide all this stuff. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's you and a spouse, and you're crea creating something. It's still not going to provide all this. So imagine bringing that all the way down. So we're averaging it out. 65 bucks, we split it in 11. My math is not good today, so if somebody wants to shout that answer out, that'd be great. Um, but it's not a lot. As you can see, like, it's not a lot of money. We're ranging around like a couple bucks, like six bucks, seven bucks around for a person. And you think about it, you go to these fancy stores and you see a charcuterie board on the thing, it's like 29 bucks split for two. They got like a couple pickles on there, and then you're like, where's the rest of the food? Then you look at your bill, it's $160, and now you're like, oh, I should have went to McDonald's or something. You know what I mean? So. Um, 65 bucks for the whole plate, and we have a lot of fresh stuff. So a couple things we'll go over. We'll go over, um, I'm going to show you a, like a few tricks as far as like to brighten your plate. And then literally we'll, we'll just go out and have at it, okay? So first one I'm going to use is I'm going to uh, show you how to create a flower with any orange or citrus. This one's actually pretty easy. I'm going to steal a knife. Okay, thank you. No, no, don't, don't touch the plate. I'll come around. I'll base myself in the middle. So any circle, any circle citrus. So today I decided to switch it up, um, and we did grapefruits. Um, but they like ruby red grapefruits. So if you guys don't like grapefruits, I'm sorry, but you can do this with oranges. You can do it with apples, but, eh, you know, whatever. But any type of citrusy fruit that they have. So the, my first stab is literally at an angle in the middle. Now, I've been doing this forever, so that's why I'm holding it. But if you have not or you're not comfortable with the knives, please place them down, okay? And it's always at an angle. So the, actually, the funky thing about this, you can actually do this with a watermelon as well. You obviously need a bigger knife. Um, do it with a watermelon as well, and then you create this bowl. You dig it out, and then you can put whatever you want in there. You can take the flesh and... Uh, puree it, throw some vodka in there, right? A little summertime, a little stuff like that. Or you can, um, if you take the flesh out and maybe you have like um, other stuff like cantaloupe or honeydew or something like that, cut it all up and then throw that back in there. Now you have like this nice cute vessel for the summertime and people think you went out and catered and you said, nope, I did it myself. So my next, my next cut is literally triangles. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do around the whole thing. So that's why these small paring knives are perfect for something like this. But if you have a bigger knife, just understand how far along you're gonna go in there so you don't mess up your cut. So literally I'm just gonna work my way around this and I'm making like a jack-o'-lantern face the whole way around. And I'm doing it like this so you guys can see. And as you can see, like it's like, hey, how you doing? Um, and you're just working your way around this. And this is, this is actually good um, to use spring or any time else because what you can do is you can take, um, let's see here. You can get creative, okay? I'm just gonna take this here. I'm gonna take these two ends here. 
Where am I? Where am I? Okay. And I'm using this because they're just, just a different color. And I'm going to cut off the ends. All right. And now I have these two little nublets here, right? And I'm going to find a piece here. I'm going to use this piece here just to prop it open. And then I'm literally going to make a little incision looking like little eyes here. And then I'm going to use my nublets here and drive that into there. So now you have like something for the kids as far as like a little, a little thing there. That's something that's simple that was on the, on the ground. So you can use something like this for maybe like a Pac-Man thing or um, what's the, ho oh, Halloween, duh, right? Um, let's not think about October right now. Let's just enjoy the summer. Um, so we can, you can use that for that, but still I'll work my way around and I'm just gonna take my time with it. I'm working my way around. Like I said, I've been doing these for a very long time. So I kind of set these up for even just garnish around parties or if I'm bartending or anything like that. Um, or even decorating around the house if I have like guests and I want to look fancy, I do that. And I just work my way around all the way until I'm all the way around. And it doesn't have to be perfect, which is awesome. And then what you do is you kind of work your way out and there you have the fruits. And the reason why I chose the grapefruit today because it's just a different contrast of colors. So you can use that. Um, and then you're like, ooh, okay, so what do I do to kind of enhance this? Now you're feeling fancy, you do this all the time, people got used to it already. So now you'll take a strawberry, let's take a strawberry, okay? And let's just cut the, the top off there. And now we use that as like the bud of your flower. And now you just enhance your flower by using the strawberry. And the cool thing about garnish like this is they're edible and you can just snack on it or whatever. So we talked to you about the flower aspect. Everybody's comfortable with the flower. Do you feel like you can do it on something bigger, on a bigger scale as well? Okay, it's, it's really easy and it's a great way to kind of add a little bit of pizzazz to what you got going on, okay? Um, let's talk about layering. So layering is important when you're building a charcuterie board because you want to look like it's a lot, but compacted down. So these funky boards that we have today, which are awesome. Um, how much were these? Okay, pack of 18, right? So you guys can host charcuterie parties at your house and charge them at the door, which is awesome. Um, but you want to talk about layering. So even, even now, as you see, everything is layered up to kind of bring your eye to what we have going on. So obviously, we got like some fresh Portuguese rolls that were made by a local bakery that price right sells. You can get the whole bag for uh, like $29. I mean, I'm, I'm not sorry, not $29. $2.99? Yeah, $29. It would kill my budget. Um, but you also want to, you want to, you want to build upward. And then as you build upward, you layer down. So you can start in the middle, right? I don't really want to take away from you guys' this stuff, so I'll just use the preserves as like a, a figure. You want to start in the middle, you can start in the middle, right? Now, if you guys are doing a dip or anything like that, perfect. You throw your dip in the middle and that's your base. And then you work up to flow down. I don't want to take away from a lot of the stuff that you guys going on. Up to go down. So that's how you do that. Also, the way to enhance a plate is glaze, glaze, glaze. So as you can see here, we got some balsamic glaze. And then we have some honey. We have preserves. We have all those things. These are ways to enhance your plate, like I'm telling you. So we have, well, you know, a paper plate, right? I'm just literally going to, let's see here. Now I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to literally take this glaze. Now see how boring this plate is? And I probably didn't do anything fancy with this. But now I'm creating something by just using the glaze. Okay? Now understand this is balsamic. So a lot of it doesn't mix with others. 
Now you're saying to yourself, oh, that's terrible. No, that's good because now when you're using your honey, it's just not going to be a mismatch of color. The honey stays it to itself and then the balsamic stays to itself. So now you can create layers of like aesthetics when you're looking at stuff. Um, olive oil is perfect because olive oil really doesn't mix with much at all. So when you're using olive oil or a balsamic glaze, which is perfect, you literally can draw on your plate as you design your plate. And that's all I'm giving you guys today because it's about cooking, it's about having fun, even though we're not cooking nothing today, we're more like designing, we're on a designing tip, okay? Um, so right now, I'll crack a couple of these open here and we'll just start to trickle down the line and you guys can come up and take what you need, ask questions. Um, ask a lot of questions if you want, please do. Um, allergies, who's allergic to stuff? Dairy and soy, so um, dairy free, dairy free, dairy free, dairy free. I don't know if the, let me check the package on the, on the rolls. Um, but preserves are good, the preserves are good. Um, got a couple crackers, I know the meats are good. Um, there is some cheese here, some Cracker Barrel, so stay away from the Cracker Barrel, okay? And then I also have a couple of baby bells and they're individually packed, so please feel free to open and take one on the plate. Remember to design middle to, middle to bottom or side down, so oh, let me talk about side down too. So side, pick, pick, pick a corner or pick a, a thing and commit to it. Commit to your corner and build off your corner, right? So now you design downward. You usually wedge, th wedge things in corners, right? Uh, make sure it's uncomfortable. So when you're looking, people are more so eating what's available, and that's how your charcuterie board stays like on the plate, and people will gravitate until just making a whole mess. People will gravitate what they can to, to get it off, OK? So any questions as of right now? Is everybody like a little peckish? Are we a little hungry? So all right, so let's, let's get up and have some fun with it. Here's your knife, okay? Um, if you need any help with the flowers or knife work, let me know. Um, also too, be rustic. Instead of cutting your bread, rip your bread, right? Um, we have the, the baby bell peppers. Cucumbers, we need one more knife. One more knife. Mm -hmm. um, if you get a cucumber and you peel that cucumber, use the skin. Use the skin and make a little twirl, wrap it. Um, use that greenery, use the freshness, right? Because we're also, we're, we're creating something that we want to eat, but we are also creating something that is pleasurable to look at as well, okay? Background? Oh, absolutely. So you guys are just not listening to a crazy man. Um, I was on MasterChef twice. Um, season four and season 12. So I know a little bit. I don't know a lot because I didn't win, but I know a little bit. Um, season four was fantastic for me. It was a very eye-opening experience about TV and also an eye experience about food. I learned a lot from Gordon. Um, season 12 was taking all my expertise and the things that I've been involved in. Um, and just supplying them because that was more like an all-star challenge, like a welcome back challenge. Didn't win that one either. Um, now, what, was, what was Gordon really like in person? Um, Gordon in person is passionate about food. So I get this question all the time, which is awesome. Um, but a lot of people think like he's just a mean person, mean-spirited or whatever. He's really passionate about the food and the food he brings. So if he's teaching you, he wants you to pay attention. If you're making rookie mistakes, he's like, what the hell are you doing? Things like that. Um, and obviously, he's dropping plenty of F-bombs. Um, but that's how he is regularly. Like when I'm talking to him in a hotel, he's dropping plenty of F-bombs. Um, he loves his kids. He's a father, um, just like myself. So me and him always click and uh, talk about that stuff when I see him. Um, but he's just an all-around good person that loves food and has a passion for food. And you grew up in Stoughton? 
No, I actually didn't grow up in Stone. I'm actually, I'm between Chicago and Cambridge. So, well, I know your mom was in Stone. Yes, That's so Stone we've been, mom. yep, so we've been kind of, we kind of migrated to Stoughton about 11 years ago. Um, my mom bought, she literally, I can wave to her when I'm here. My mom bought 11 years ago when houses were normal prices. Um, <laughs> as we all know, that's crazy. Um, so she's making out like a bandit now. I told her, don't sell, don't, don't sell. Um, but it's been, it's been cool. I actually own a business in Stoughton. I love Stoughton. I drive to Stoughton every single day. Uh, my business is uh, Optimal Nutrition. It's right in Stoughton on 24 Washington Street. Shameless plug. Shake shop, shakes and teas. I've been owning that for probably three years now. And there's also one in... No, the, we don't have one in Canton anymore. So what we did was we dialed back and we just wanted to stay straight to Stoughton. We wanted to make ourselves like a real pillar in the community. We wanted to donate. We wanted to do a lot of things for people in the community. So without spreading ourselves too thin, we decided to go right and, and stay right to Stoughton. Um, but I love, I love here. Like if I could have bought here, I definitely would have. Um, but it was a nightmare to try to find any, I mean anything. I mean the market's crazy anyway, so. That APR is bananas. What's the origin of, um, I can't even pronounce it, like you can't. Charcuterie? Charcuterie. Well, charcuterie comes, I mean, charcuterie is based like the most, the most easiest eating you possibly can do, right? It's everything that you have, and it's like a peckish, feelish thing that you have. You got a little bit of meat in the fridge, let's take that. You got a little bit, a little bit of cheese. Who doesn't like meat and cheese? Who doesn't like cheese and crackers? I feel like cheese and crackers is like the best snack ever, right? Especially you got a nice sharp cheddar, perfect. And a lot of it came from a necessity where you didn't have much, so you put a lot of different things on the table, a lot of different things on the board. And now as time elevated, um, we elevated as people learning food. So you're mixing sweet with savory. Now you're decorating it now. You're doing more things that you probably wouldn't have done out of necessity and more it's like out of what you really like to do. Now you could do this for like leftovers. Oh, yeah, as, absolutely. So depends what the, depends what you're it depends on what you're having, right? I want to do this with a bolognese, like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, but, yeah. but as far as like, let's say you um, did some ribs, like, and you can do it like a rib, you can do like a barbecue charcuterie board. So you can have some ribs, you can have some pickles, you can have a lot of that stuff designed. You can do this with all fruits if you wanted to do it. You can do it with candy. Last time we did it, we had like candy and chips and you can design like that. Um, you could go sweet or savory. There's no real right or wrong way to do it, which makes it easy for everyone to understand. It's about how creative you want to be. It's literally bringing that uh, creation to the board and making it in as inviting as possible. Well, I'm gonna get my stuff before it's all gone. No, yes, please do. Yeah. yeah. No, it, I, there's a lot left too, so. Yeah, we have cutting boards that are not your cutting boards, so you're not forced to cut on your pretty board. You wanna bring that home and share that? Can I ask you to spicy? No, they're not spicy. Oh, good. So it's like a green, a green peppers. Perfect. How are you doing? Good. Good? You feeling the whole? Well, I thought I would be better at it, but... No, 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 no. It, <laughs> listen, you take, your, you take your time, and literally you're like, oh, I'm not cutting well, and then as soon as you open it, it's like, oh, it's perfect. All right. Okay, it looks like you've done this before, huh? No, you just... I just like to be creative. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Creation <laughs> is the key. Creation is the key here. This is what we want to do. There's no right or wrong way. You want to be able to create all your stuff, but you also want it to make sense, right? We don't want to put something that doesn't make sense next to something that does make sense or doesn't make sense. You want to be able to eat it. You know what I mean? Please do. Please do. Please do. See, now you see how the star is here? You can use that star as a garnish. Once you got rid of, once you got, you take what you want to eat, you're like, okay, I'm going to get my snack on. And then you take the star and garnish how you want to do it. No, use your board. This okay. is your board here. Okay. Now you need a, yeah, so take your cutting board to actual cut okay. and then design on your pretty board. Gotcha. Awesome, everybody. No one wanted the croissants? Okay, yeah. I mean, even if, you, even if you're just going to, even if you don't want them to, even if you don't want it on, on your plate, just eat it. Like, you know, <laughs> just eat a croissant. 
So do your, so the same way I did with this, do that in the middle, or depends on how big you want the, fl the actual end of the flower. Do you want it smaller or do you want it bigger? If you want it smaller, you work your way to the smaller end. If you want it bigger, work your way to the middle. And then when you're ready to put it on, just poke a tiny little hole in there so you can kind of wiggle the, 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 um, the cucumber in there. Great idea, though. Great idea. Where are we going with this over here? Well, the, Im the imagination outweighs the talent. So okay. Um, what are we doing? I feel like one time I learned how to do like, kind of like a swan thing or something, but I can't remember what I was doing. Okay, so swan cut in half. Actually, I got some apples. I'll, I'll go over a swan tutorial, if I can remember. Oh, the, 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 salami the salami roses? Yeah. All right, let me go over this, and then I'll teach you the salami rose. I'll try to do it. I usually do it with a cup at home, but I'll wing it. Let me see. All right, so cut this in half. This way. Okay. Okay? So you have your flower? I think so. Yeah. And then now what you do is you make a little slit at the bottom so you can put it in there. Okay. So now you have your base side. So I'm going over um, apple swans if anybody wants to look. I'm just going to put it up or whatever. So we go half of that, because this is your base. This is where you're going to stab down, okay? So now, you want to cut wings, okay? So this is your middle. I'm just going to make a small, a small little line, okay? Now you want to go here, since that's your middle. Not all the way down. And then you had the, the right idea. You want to go the same way across, okay? So make me, oh, where am I? Right here. And then... I'm going to go across. I'll try not to break it. That was my. <laughs> yeah, you got to be. The mind little... was there, the talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. The talent is always there. As long as you're here, that's where the talent is. Okay. So, this is what we look like after we make the first incision. So, it's literally like you come down halfway, not to all the way, and then you come across to get that little chunk out, okay? I know it's tempted to eat it because I'm starving right now. Don't eat it. You'll need it, okay? Now, you'll need to do the same thing with this piece. Gotcha. So now I'll let you try it. Mm -hmm. So come all the way, not all the way down, just mm -hmm. the, the way that you want to come, and then come across again. What you needed was you needed a bigger piece of tomato to hold up to that flower. So what you do is, what I would do with this is I would, you see here? Mm -hmm. So I would just make a small incision here. Just something at least where you can wiggle something around, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to cut it because you don't want to lose that integrity. And then you want to take... And at least you have one that's there, right? And you can put this one in the middle or you could put it at the end. Mm -hmm. But now the vision is now the vision is there. Now you can put that on a piece and now you're like now you can decorate around that where you're going with that, right? Even with this, even if with this is not gone since you have that layer there, if you slice yeah. right? And that's an old do. And now you have a nice I'll little flop. Like right. Right, right, right. So see it's coming along. You see how it's coming along? The black is it's it looks it's looking pretty. It's looking really nice. All right, John. What do we got here? You want traditional? You just lay in a whole bunch of stuff. What are we doing? You know, <laughs> it looks good. You're playing off color, right? You're playing off eatability too. Is that a word? Let's let's, let's create that eatability. Uh, e a t a b. Literally, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, but you're eating off it because now someone's like, oh, okay, boom, all right, mm, okay. mm. that's how you're doing, that's how you're playing it. All right, we got a star here. Oh, yeah, um, what am I doing? Salami roses, right? Are we working on that? Or everybody's like, F the salami roses, 
Let's just, I'm hungry. Now let's just get this going. Are we doing that? Because I'm kind of hungry. I'm not going to lie. Because I, I don't really know how to do the salami roses. <laughs> the salami roses never make it, the, the salami never makes it to the board. I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. Like, the salami's gone before the board is built. So I'm like, hey, let's just work on everything else. Uh, but it's usually, it's a, it's a roll, and you roll it at an angle. So let me, let me steal a piece of this here. And if I'm not mistaken, I know it's always a circle, but you work your way around. You got to use a few. And you work your way around to it, and it's supposed to be you work down. And then you're supposed to add to it. Oh, I get it. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, we'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> Usually, like if you do it in a um, if you do it in a uh, wine glass, you just layer it and then you literally flip the wine glass over and it's a beautiful rose. And unfortunately, we haven't got the permit for wine yet, but as soon as we do, I promise you, I'll get you guys in here some Cabernet, some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 hot today, so. A little Sauvignon Blanc. I, I get you guys. I get you guys squared away. I don't drink. Would you do mocktails? I don't drink either. Oh, good. Yeah. So I know all the mocktails. I made me a mocktail last night. Yeah, I, I had me a nice little pineapple, a little grenadine on there. I had a piece of water. Yeah, absolutely. I, cause I don't want to feel left out. I want to feel part of the crew. You know what I mean? We also have some sriracha sauce. We might give you another color. Like, it might give you a nice little bright red. Now, this is something I would eat here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks good. What do you got going? You eat, eatability the here? Layering. Yes. Yeah. Good call. Where was your, fir where was your first mark? Um, so and you went, and you went. And I went this way. Good, 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 good. Hello. <coughs> I love that. I really like, I might steal this idea, though, here, what you got going here. I might, I might steal that. So if you see like a post from my like catering thing and you're like, wait a minute, I know where that's from. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just marking it down right now. You guys signed uh, those waivers so I can kind of take what I need there. I got a big event actually not next week, the week after that. And that might be perfect for that event just for the garnish so no one eats it. Um, we don't have something on box but we definitely want to do I definitely want to start venturing outside I definitely want to do like grilling 101 um, I want to get people outside you know it's a little stuffy in here but who doesn't like who doesn't like grill food a lot of times people do the grilling the wrong way I don't want to say wrong way because it's not I mean everybody's interested yeah you know what I mean like so I want to teach people how to just absolutely we want we want to talk Meat temperatures, food temperatures, things like that. I definitely want to talk about that stuff. So that's the kind of what we're going to do. OK, so OK, great. So you messed up a little bit in here. I think I ate that piece, so we just. Well, check it. <laughs> a, a lot goes a long way. So when you got your last wing, you could have stopped there. You went a little oh, bit longer. Okay. So here, here's the thing. Thank you. Thank you. And now you have a swan. So let me just. So this is Tears' swan. Okay, and that's what we did. We just, you literally cut it in half. You work both sides. You use the seed as an eyeball. And then now you have a note, like you can put this in the corner and work on that. You can do that with a watermelon, which is crazy. I've done that with a watermelon enough. Any circular fruit, you can get a base on. That's perfect. All right, John, it looks like you're done. Let's, uh, Let's go over here and give it a scale from 1 to 10. Well, first of all, you showed up, so it's a 10, right? <laughs> well, I kind of had to show up today. Yeah, you know, I mean, may, maybe. But here we went off at, like, if I look at this board, it looks very inviting. Mm -hmm. If I'm hungry, that's the board I want to eat from. Now, I'm probably skipping over the croissants, because there's only four. I don't want to be the greedy guy that takes all the croissants, <laughs> right? But I'm diving into the meat. I'm diving into the cheese. I might make a sandwich based off of what you guys got going on here. Um, I leave this alone because it looks too pretty. And now you can present that and people think you're famous. My only critique is you got to have something to change up. You got to have something to change up your directions. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're all here. It's all 
like in a row. Yeah, it's all in a row. It's very uniform. It's almost too pretty to eat. You know what I mean? No, of course you're going to eat it. But you want to you want to make sure that as many with your design, you want it almost to look like a natural design, not a uniform design. But scale from one to ten, it's a nine point five. Oh, you're being too generous. No, you're filming, so. <laughs> okay, pretend the cameras weren't here. Right? No, the cameras weren't here. I'm giving it a nine. You got the point five because you brought the cameras in. I like to, I like to, I like that. All right, we're looking, we're looking. I like it. <laughs> I like it. No, like I like it. So it looks like you're done, right, Miss? Okay, let's, so let's go, let's go in and investigate. Are you done, sir? Let's go in and investigate here. Now, pay close attention, sir. This is, what I, this is what I mean. Look at her flow. That's beautiful. It's a natural flow, right? She's going to tell me, she's, oh, I don't do this. I've never done this. And she's lying, right? I'm joking. I'm joking. But it's, it's beautiful. Color, pop, you know where to go, right? Mm -hmm. And it's inviting to eat as well as inviting to look at. You see your husband here? <laughs> this is a man's board. <laughs> this is a man's board. It got the, you got all your basic food groups that you need. You got a little pizzazz. I love what he did with the pepper. Listen, you got, it, you got the pizzazz, and you got the, you know what? I'm hungry. I'm going to eat it. So I'm going to leave the pizzazz alone. Now I'm going to eat it, right? You got a little jam to let me know, hey, I got a sensitive side. I got the jam going. But I'm hard-nosed with that, with that, <laughs> with the meat. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's gentle salt. I like it. But listen, 10 out of 10s. Really nice. 10 out of 10s. My only critique, mm -hmm. get rid of the laughing cow cheese. Because it's your brand. Okay. Gotcha. So peel the cheese and put it on there. It's your brand, right? We're not advertising for anyone. They didn't pay us. You, unless the laughing cow tells you, hey, you mind leaving, you know, <laughs> give you a little extra bucks. But that's you. So now this is you. Your name again, miss? Colby. This is Colby's plate. Very nice, Colby. Shout out to Colby. Number eight and 24. I like that. Are you done? Yeah. Are you done, sir? All done. Okay, all right. We're going in, all right? I think he ate a lot of here. He was snacking. I seen him. <laughs> but I do, one thing I was saying the whole class, I love this here. And I am going to bite, I am going to bite it. I like this. I like it because I understand sweet and savory. And this gives you the best sweet and savory options with those gala apples with the, with the uh, deli meats. It's wonderful, right? He got a little festive, made it inviting for everyone, right? And he made it accessible. Because I'm just picking this up and eating it. Like, you got the pepper, got the, you know, that's the first thing you grab it to, too. I would have loved to see more of these because that, once that's gone, it's gone. Okay, I love that. <clears throat> Let's bring it to this lady's plate, okay? Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag, good, hashtag good eats, right? Now she built, now I can tell she built from this corner and flowed down. Changed direction to give it a nice split to say, hey, okay, we gotta put some veggies on the table, right? And then she went with the stuffed pepper with a little bit of that. I'm eating that. What did you stuff that with? Uh, laughing cow cheese? Yes, I want, so this is what I want. I want more of those. You know what I mean? Like, once the first person comes to the board and they're like, oh, okay. And they're like, oh my God, it was so good. You got to go try that. And they go over and you're like, well, where is it? And then it takes away from the rest of the board. I want more of these. I want more of that, right? And make those your flow in your, uni in your universe, right? Wonderful. 10 out of 10. I like them both. And we're flowing over. She was already started. She went out the gate with this one, okay? She started with the double. I like it because she gave me some, she, she went uniform too, as you can see. She still built to the corner, which we wanted to see. She went uniform here. So now, if I like this, I like the, the croissant with the apple. I say, John, you got to try the croissant with the apple. Then you can go and say, oh, there's one right here. Boom, croissant and apple. Then you say, hey, then you say, hey, Kobe, you got to try the croissant with the apple. Then she goes on and tries. So now there's a lot of the croissant with the apple, which I love, right? Now you get the eatable. Now, as well, right, I need some veggies in my plate. My mom told me to eat my veggies. She left some skin up, some skin down. So she's thinking, the brain is thinking, what do I want to see? Light, dark, composures of colors. 10 out of 10. I love it. OK? Who else is done? Are we still is the are we still working over here? Okay, let's still let's still wait. Listen, take your time. We have 
Plenty of time? What, what, what clothes one more clothes? How about that? Keep working. The designs over here are really well. I like what I see. Oh, you guys can eat now, too. I went over the critique. Dive all up in your food. Yes. Yes, you can eat now. As soon as I come over and give you a, a critique. Actually, you know what? Don't kill it yet. I definitely want to take pictures. And the boards are yours, guys. Yeah, OK, you're up? All right, let's do it. All right. OK, here we go. Now, what you want? You want middle here? You want middle and then bread around? OK, so we got, you went, OK, so you went with the mirror effect, most likely, right? We got cheese, cheese, strawberry, strawberry. You went with the slices, crackers. Now, in this plate, I'm eating the crackers, I'm eating the deli meat, and the cheese, and the peppers. I'm not touching the strawberries because they're too pretty, right? I want to see more of the strawberries. If we're basing our plate off the strawberries, I want a strawberry in each corner. Oh, OK. Right? One, two, three, four. Then you can get everything to the middle. And now your focal point is middle here. And now your cucumber makes sense. I love what he did with the peppers. Love the peppers. Because now I'm, they're inviting. And now I'm one, two, three. I'm taking a piece of cheese. I'm wrapping it up in the meat. Boom. Good. 10 out of 10. I like it. I like it. Are we done? Coming I'm coming. I'm coming if you're done. Where else do you want to go? It's just really orange. Yeah, you got Flavor Town. You go, you're going to Flavor Town. <laughs> you want to break up your orange? I just want some green or something, so I'm just trying to figure out what to do with the green. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but mm -hmm. it's not, it doesn't go with the fruit. Well, it doesn't have to go. Check this out. Roll it up. Roll it up. Right? And just... Put it in certain corners here. You know what I mean? So net, and then make another one and put it in the other corner. And that literally will cre that creates your plate. It doesn't have to be. Well, cucumbers are fruit anyway. It has seeds, right? Now, now what is it? What is it? What is uh, what's it? Knowledge versus understanding. Knowledge is understanding that tomatoes are fruit, and understanding is understanding that it doesn't belong in a fruit salad. You ever heard that? I'm probably saying it wrong, too. So. <laughs> yes, there we go. There we go. I'm probably saying it. Wisdom is, is it doesn't belong in a fruit salad, right? Um, but for decoration, like, even if you have parsley, if we have parsley on the table, yeah, you parsley. can break it up with parsley, but we're not going to have the strawberries in a parsley, right? right. Gotcha. All right, so I'm going to critique your plate, because you look about done. And I love what you did. So we have a, we have, so we have an eye manipulation on this plate. OK? This is easy. Well, looking down, and I'm look, all I see when I look at this concoction here is a flower, right? I see the bouquet, mm -hmm. the stems, and the actual flower. Right. In reality, it's food. If you look at it from this direction, it does look like a flower. Yeah. You're looking, and looking at my direction, it's a flower, too. You got the stems. You got the flower out, it's a bouquet. Now, if when I'm eating, I don't eat that because it's so pretty. I go to the meats, I go to the cheeses, I take a couple of slices here. Even the, um, what, are the, what do you call those? The grapefruits look very inviting, they look very refreshing. What she did is she twisted it, now the juices are popping within the grapefruits, and now you're like, oh, that looks wonderful, without even putting on any extra glaze, right? Then you got, you're moving, savory to sweet, but it's seamless with savory to sweet. You know what I mean? 10 out of 10. Thank you. 10 out of 10. I haven't gave 10 out of 10. You done? All right, Teresa, your last. Don't, don't let. All right, here we go. See, now this, now this is more of a traditional board with some pizzazz, right? You never get rid of the classics. You keep the vinyl. This is a wonderful vinyl record, right? But the vinyl record is Justin Bieber, <laughs> right? You're getting, you're getting a little scissor. You're getting a little Summer Walker in there. But it's a vinyl record, right? So you have the meat. So you have the meat and you have the bread. Now, the bread is your focal point to do everything that you want to do for this plate. You take a piece of bread. You grab your meat. You take a piece of bread. You grab some veggies, right? 
Now it's your focal point for all your things. Now, you understand that you're not going to grab the, the, uh, the, the bread with the balsamic, but right next door, Flavortown, you got the croissants there. Now you go from croissant to fruit, things like that. You know what I mean? And then you have a smear of the cheese, and she put the cheese with a little bit of the cinnamon on there, which is underrated when it comes to that. So now it's almost like a sweet, savory bagel topping where you could just grab a crack and, and dip right in. You know what I mean? 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10. I like it. I like it. I'm going to grab a pick because I want these picks all for, um, for the website to make it so I don't lose my job. I have to look like I'm teaching you guys something. All right, Tirza. You're done? Yeah. All right. I'm go okay, yeah. All right. Here we go. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. All right. Right in the middle. Move it. Move it. Move it. Let's see what we got here. See, now, now listen. I would love for this board, the actual board, to be bigger because it's a bountiful board. I'm going to give this the double Bs here. This is a feast. This is, I'm hungry. It's me and my husband. We're not going to finish this. Right? It's. Me, yeah, it's. I got salad. I got you got every, you got everything going. <laughs> now, what I love too is, you got, you got this concoction here, and you built up and you built down. So it almost gives you like a waterfall feel, right? Without the water, but everything's a cat. It's like a cascade. Everything's cascading down. I'm looking, but it has eatability. The word that we made up today. I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing the fruit. I'm grabbing the the veggies, and I might even dip them in the fruit. I'm grabbing the crack. I'm definitely grabbing the crackers and the, and the pretzels and, and dipping. That's what I'm using as my bowl. And then when it's like right at the end, I'm grabbing that, rolling that, and eating that. Because that's probably, that's wonderful. Mm. I love what you got going on here. I like the, the, the accessibility to savory and sweet. And I like the combination of it. 10 out of 10. Mm. I haven't given anybody no 9.5s yet, John. <laughs> I think I'm the only one. I think you might be. <laughs> I think you, are you done? Okay, all right, Let, let's slide over right here. Also, okay, so we have flour. So we have the flour made out of the tomatoes, which is wonderful. Now that's your folk, that was your focal point and you moved on out? Mm -hmm. I can tell that from the plate. Now again, bountiful board. This is eat, this is eat 101. Now, like I, was, like I was saying, the strawberries. Now the strawberries keep you engaged this way, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, hey, you're going out of bounds. Hey, you're going out of bounds. Strawberries are here, right? You have the crackers. You have the honey with the apple. So it doesn't like honey, apple, and cinnamon, right? It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, then right on the next side, you got your sweet. Then on the right side, you got your savory and heat with the with the red chili yeah. flake. Let's give a little color. Yeah, to give a little color, but it's also a good eat, right? Mm -hmm. Then to cool you down, you got a little tomato. Yep, with some balsamic. With some balsamic, and then the balsamic carries your way into your next eating dish. Right. Ten out of ten. You guys, are, you guys are killing this. Thank you. Love the tomato. You guys are killing it. Last but not least. Oh, let me take a picture of yours. Oh, thank you. Once I get, once I snap a picture, you guys can eat. Okay. Last but not least, Tirza. Tirza's been at every class since we came here. All right. Okay. Okay, veteran. All right. Here we go. So. Now, even though this is a, a bigger board and it's a biting board, it's still, a, it's still an elegant board. It's not aggressive. It tells you it, it tells you, you want to eat. You have a lot of things that are bringing it to your eye, but then you have a lot of eatability down here. That I love. I love the, the swan. The swan is swimming. It looks like the swan is swimming next to the flower. That was wonderful. I love the stackable meat, right? crackers and then you bring it into the sweet and then you finish with a nice palate cleanser with the peppers. So that pepper is not like a, so it's like a sweet pepper and it doesn't have anything on it. So what happens is when you're done eating this, you can kind of snack on the pepper without feeling greedy. You're like, okay, I can still eat a little bit. The pepper is all water. I'm good. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. 10 out of 10. I'm going to snap a picture too. And please, let me see. How do I get it a good? This anyway. Okay. I gotta get it this way? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's gotta be a loser. <laughs> it's gotta, someone's gotta take, you gotta take one for the team. Please, now please eat. 
Now, understand, we did 11 charcuterie boards. 11. Bountiful charcuterie boards. There's no lack of anything on the board. Everybody got to use everything they wanted to use. 11 of them for only $65. I stress to you guys, shop local. Save yourself a buck, okay? Um, and this is not a bad, this is kind of healthy too, right? Let's, let's, let's be honest, right? You know, it's healthy, it's summertime, right? Um, I'm not going to be a stickler on the cheese. I love cheese. Uh -huh. Damn it. Most places, one, one charity board would cost $65. $65. Or, not a, or, or let's say right. on the lesser side, the size of the board, let's say $29, bucks, yeah. right? Let's say $29. Yeah. Bucks. You guys are able to do all this. These are bountiful boards. These are plenty of food. You guys are probably not going to go home and cook dinner because you're like, I'm kind of full. Like, the kids got to fend for themselves. Like, give them, give them cereal. They, they can have cereal tonight, <laughs> right? Give them some Captain Crunch. Yeah, give, give them some ramen, right? Or bring the board to them and like, oh, mommy, what's that? Ew, what's that? Like, you know, their, their palates are not fancy enough for you guys. But yeah, please, like, this is very important. I stress this enough, shop locally. You shop locally, you can get a lot of bang for your buck. You should be surprised how much you can save, especially when you have other people depending on you, if you kind of shop locally. Now, it doesn't have to be for everything. Now, for example, Price right sometimes lacks in a lot of the fresh ingredients. So you really got to dive down and look, right? But if you can find a lot of those organics, if people are looking to do organics, go to Price Right. Save yourself seven, eight dollars per organic if you go there, right? Now, you, they're not going to have a tomahawk steak there, right? But you save so much money shopping there, you head over to the Roach Brothers, you tell the guy, hey, hook me up with the big steak. He gets you the big steak, but now you can, it's affordable now, right? Order some gold leaf from Amazon, throw it out on your steak, tell people you went to roof, Chris. It works every time. So that's class. I'm not rushing you guys out of here. Please eat. I'm going to start to clean up a little bit. I want to thank everybody. Yes, please. Thank you for everybody for coming. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Oh, also, I'm open for questions, like questions, all that stuff. Please shout them out. Questions about anything, about what else are you going to do in class? When's the next class, right? Um, we are doing a summer send-off class, and that will be um, like a grilling 101 class. We're going to talk about charcoal versus gas and all that other stuff. I will, buy, I will push the budget a little bit. We'll buy some steaks. We'll get some chicken out there. We're not going to cheap you out and get some hot dogs and hamburgers. We're going to do some, gr we'll do some good stuff. I'll try to get some seafood, all that. If anybody has shellfish allergies, let me know. We'll stay far away from that, but we'll do a little bit of everything. And then we'll just talk about a lot of that stuff too. So now going into grilling season because summertime is right there, you guys feel confident getting behind there and throwing your grill on. Yeah. I grill all year round, so I'm used to grilling overnight. Um, this summer I actually plan on building me a, um, a smoke pit in, in my underground and I want to do like a whole pig. Um, but I'm thinking more than, <laughs> thinking more than whatever, but I'm going to build the apparatus and it will probably just be a big hole in my backyard, but I'm going to try to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> when I do a big, I'm, I'm going to try to figure it out, but that's what I, I kind of want to learn to do. Um, I tell you guys like my suggestion about cooking when it comes to yourself or anybody that you want to cook, please encourage them to do it. Um, one, I think food builds character. Um, and also, too, it gives a sense, so especially with kids, I have a 14-year-old daughter, it gives them a sense of responsibility and ownership of what they do. Even if it's a bowl of ramen, if they're preparing it themselves, it's the best thing they ever did. Um, and, really, and really push them to do so. We need better chefs out there because our world is crumbling. Um, we need better <laughs> chefs, right? Um, and what's a better, you know, what's a better way? You come home from a long day and the kid got the food prepared. That's what we had kids for. We had kids for the <laughs> chores. We had them to do the stuff, right? That's what we had them for. I know I, I learned how to cook when I was nine years old. And it was more out of necessity because my mom was always working. Um, she held down three jobs. She raised me and my sister down or whatever. So when I was able to get comfortable behind a stove and my mom was allowing me to, I did that. I also stayed right up m underneath my grandmother's skirt when she cooked Sunday dinners every Sunday. And um, she just let me. She 
let me hold knives. She let me, you know, I burnt myself plenty of times and everything like that. I didn't lose any fingers. I have all 10. Um, but that's what she let me do. And as, you know, I, I would burn myself. Ah, you okay? All right, good. Wrap it up. Get it going. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not saying to put your kid's hand in the fire, but, you know, you got to let them live a little. They fall on the ground, and all we want to do is hold them up. You let them fall. You say you're all right. They dust themselves off. They keep going. It builds character. That's what we need in the world, right? We need compassion. We need, we need all that good stuff. Um, and as the years went on, I got really good around like 11 years old, 11, 12, where now I can provide like three course meals for my mom when she gets out of work. She can eat like real food. It wasn't just, hey mom, I made you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But now it's, hey mom, I fried up some fish, some rice and beans and some plantains. So now she can eat real food when she gets off of work, which is fantastic. Um, then just providing that and always being that, I used it, to be honest, I used it to get women. Um, I got it to get my girlfriend now, and she never left. Um, and that was probably like 11, 11 plus 13 years ago. Um, I cooked a salmon, and she stayed. Um, and it's just, one of the, it's just one of those things that you want to be able to do. Um, it, brings, it brings hope. It brings like kindness, you know what I mean, when someone can do something for you like that, an, an act of service. I guess the love language is the new thing that people are talking about, act of services, right? This is an act of service. I do all the cooking in my home. Um, my daughter just makes requests, and I just cook them. Um, and she makes some serious requests. Oh, can I have oysters? Can I have, oh, daddy, can I have a tomahawk steak? Can you put some gold stuff on there? I'm like, OK, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd love a uh, seafood boil. Um, I'm like, oh, you don't want no ra Oh, yeah, can you do ramen? But can you do a soft-boiled egg, some seared pork belly, water? I'm like, OK, yeah, you know what I mean? So it keeps it going. So she's 14. You know how to tell her that you actually have 11 fingers, not 10? No, I don't know how to say no. Watch, let me show you. Yeah, yeah. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5 more. How much is that? Oh! Yeah, show that to her. Oh my goodness, she's gonna call me an idiot. <laughs> but I mean, at the at the end of the day, what's very very important is to to throw it out there, throw it out there, and you guys have fun with it too. It's like it's a nice bonding experience as well. Like when you guys can come together and hey, you cut this, you put that, you whatever, and now you feel accomplished because you actually did something you didn't think you were doing. Like, you guys as boards, like, without, you know, I'm not gassing it, I'm not, you know, overhyping it. You guys as boards are awesome. You guys did a really good job with the boards. That's why they say the kitchen is the place where everybody hangs out. I mean, why not, right? I mean, that's where the food's coming out. and every, I'm always hungry. Even if I'm not hungry, I'm always hungry. You have a party, that's where everybody ends up. In exactly. Everybody, I mean, and that's the place of the love. Like, you're fondest memories are probably surrounded by food. When you get married, you have a after party and there's food. When someone passes away as a repast, you guys are surrounded by food, Sunday dinner, um, fe food festivals. You guys remember those things. It's always surrounded by food. So enjoy food, like respect food, love food. Like that's what it's there for. You know what I mean? Like who doesn't like a Mac attack every now and then? You get yourself a Big Mac and you love it, right? But then figure out how to make it at the house. Like, oh, I could do this. And then boom, and then make a better Mac attack. And then now you got the Mac attack tack. Like, you know what I mean? So thank you for coming to class. I really appreciate it. The boards are yours. So whatever you don't eat, there's tinfoil to wrap them up with. The best part about this class is you don't have to worry about cleaning up because we take care of all that. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you. Thank you. And you, you guys will be on the, um, the email list for the like the, the last class, the bonanza, the grill bonanza stuff, whatever, please and come um, and just even if you're not even feel like learning, just come and eat. <laughs> like, like. Thanks for watching the Stone Dish. We'll see you next time.